when you let marketing people go. So it'll be the shirts coming up with Yelp on the Ah, that's actually a good point. Um, so you're reading into you 10 minutes, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all part of the plan. Um, the expert shirts, whoever's the experts in the room, are coming out in the next, uh, probably start going out in the next month or so. So you should get them fairly soon. So I kind of just thought I'd start with some fundamentals because I guess um, we're all in this room because of really what's on the screen. Um, the, the virtual machine and the hypervisor has pretty much changed pretty much changed uh, how we do things now and you know it's, it's changed our careers and everything else hopefully for the uh, for the positive. Um, and re this really echoes with what Greg was talking about earlier about vSAM. We need to actually look at managing things certainly from a storage perspective at the VM level. Much more, much more granular approach at the VM level, at the VDisk level, um, at the object level. So that's really where we're focused at the Tintry and Basically, when Tintry started, um, we started in about two, it was 2008, and the original, one of the original founders, a guy called Kieran Harty, who was, um, uh, he was an EVP at VMware um, in the late 90s in the engineering team, so his guys were responsible for things like uh, a lot of what you see today, the ESX host, the hypervisor, the virtual center, things like that. So. His kind of vision and strategy was to really build a storage platform that was much more aligned to what you do uh, in a virtual environment, what, how you manage things uh, in a virtual environment. So I guess really one of our mantras in terms of how we manage storage is we kind of believe, and you know, it's similar with uh, uh, my colleagues here, that you need to be looking at managing your storage in your virtual environment from the VDisk layer, from the, from the virtual machine layer. Um, this is kind of the traditional way that, you know, we've always, we've always done this. You know, I'm a uh, storage guy of many years. I'm not going to go into exactly how many years, but um, uh, my background has always been in storage. I've always done things at this level, played around with lungs, volumes, rate groups. Uh, every time I want to put a new workload on a platform, uh, I have to I have to rethink my design. I have to re-architect things. For example, if I want to put you know, a couple more hundred desktops or uh, additional server workloads on here, I have to think about re-architecting my entire platform in a lot of cases, and that's not a you know, trivial, easy thing to do. So our focus is you know, manage the virtual, not the physical. And really what's important is the applications run on virtual machines. So that's really your, your key point of management. Should be here, not here. I tend to, you tend to as a storage environment, you don't have a huge amount of visibility when you're looking at the world from this way up in terms of what's happening at this layer, what's happening, what, what's going on inside my VM, what's going on inside my application. So it creates challenges. So, what we did, and I, uh, I apologize for all these, some of these offensive logos that I may have uh, presented here, but um, I guess we all have to, we all have to accept we do live in a uh, multi-hypervisor world. So to address this, what, what did we do? What did our, the smart guys in Tintry do many years ago? They basically developed a, uh, basically a hypervisor-based appliance. So this is basically, I take a VM store, it's a 4U box effectively, um, give it an IP address, connect it to my hypervisor, and start putting VMs on there. It's really as simple as that. So it's really about removing a lot of the complexity that you get with traditional, I wouldn't say like Greg did, old storage. <laughs> it's uh, traditional or legacy, legacy based platforms. So I don't have to do all this stuff anymore. So the tuning aspect tends to uh, be less in terms of what I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is when you want to build a scalable environment for virtualization in terms of storage, you don't want to really be spending all your time, you know, looking at the storage platform, looking at the disk, thinking, you know, how am I going to do things better? How am I going to scale this? How am I going to grow my environment? 
it, it's a challenge, and it's also um, the, the typical disconnect between all of the people in the layer. So the storage admins, the network admins, the virtualization admins, you know, all need to be talking to each other in a traditional environment to get things working. So in terms of what we do, um, yes, probably like everybody here, we use um, Flash-based technology in our platforms. We use Flash um, as a performance, as a performance tier. Um, so again, a lot of commonalities there. Um, the other side of it, as well as using, I mean, Flash is an enabling technology to drive performance. But the other kind of aspects we look at is the ability for you to individually manage virtual machines perform operations at an individual virtual machine level. So, you know, just simple things, VM level snapshots, VM level replication, applying policies to uh, individual VMs. Again, very similar concepts and directions that uh, uh, you see with vSAN and the direction that uh, VMware are going. And again, we've been doing this for, you know, many, many years now. So it, it's kind of, you know, some very forward-thinking guys at Tintree already looked at this technology um, and really the directions that vSAN and others are taking. So in terms of um, an environment example, this is a, 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 a real environment I pulled from one of my old, I say old, traditional, <laughs> traditional, you've got me doing it now, traditional storage architectures that I had. Um, and this was the typical stuff you'd be doing for a VMware view environment. I've got, I've got to think about LUNs, RAID groups, my link clones. I've got to think about, you know, do I want a tier of SSD here? Uh, where my user data is, where my profiles are, a whole bunch of things. So it gets fairly complicated in terms of managing this. And this is all good as of the time I designed this. So I've maybe designed this for X number of users, use my, and again, if it changes, I've got to look at how I change the platform and re-architect what I'm doing. So again, our approach is pretty much based on uh, the VM store being an object store based approach. So basically, present the VM store to the hypervisor and simply start adding uh, workload to that environment. Now there's a lot more, uh, I guess, so I hate using the word, but I'm use it complexity under the covers, but a lot of that, most of that, that complexity is actually removed from the user. So you don't see lots of stuff going on in the user interface. You don't see lots of stuff uh, that you can actually go in, tweak, change, and uh, modify. So we like to keep, keep the environment as simple as possible. Simply put VMs on there, keep putting VM VMs on there, until you run out of capacity, until you run out of uh, uh, workload, um, resources, and then scale up simply by adding more, uh, adding more systems in a, in a very straightforward, linear way. Um, so I guess I'm just going to kind of go through this and I'll kind of finish on, uh, finish on this piece. It's really we've designed this around, I guess, three kind of key attributes. In order to do what we do, we need to be able to see a, a different layers of abstraction. We need to be able to see what the VM is doing. We need to see what the VDisk is doing. We need to understand the performance characteristics and things like the uh, active working set of a VM in order to determine what resources from a storage perspective we need to provide uh, to those VMs. Uh, when we say it learns, it actually changes as workloads change in virtual environments. What we do is we have some components in our operating system that will actually look at what a VM is doing, look at what it's done historically, and adapt to how that workload changes. Add, uh, give that VM more resources as it needs it, remove resources from that VM um, as it needs it. And again, this is really where it comes down to being adaptable. So again, we deliberately avoid having lots of I guess knobs, buttons, tunables on there for quality of service. Um, we kind of believe that in itself creates complexity because if you start tuning one thing and adjusting something else, it tends to uh, impact other things going on the system. 
Um, and again, we treat resources in terms of what we allocate to a VM. It's, you know, it's not just flash, but it's CPU resources, IOPS, it's a combination of a whole bunch of things that a VM needs to do in order to deliver um, the workload. So how am I doing for time? Anybody keeping time? Yeah, you're pretty close. If you've got a bit more, you can So I'll kind of just build this up quickly, because this is uh, one of these marketing slides. But again, we can talk about this uh, offline. As again, you know, as with a lot of uh, typical flash vendors out there, we're doing, we have inline deduplication and compression, a couple of reasons. One, so we can improve the density. And again, because we only work in flash based on the virtual machine's active working set, that, that's really what we're focused on. And the second thing around why we dedupe and compress is, you know, flash devices wear out. So we need to limit the number of writes and reduce write amplification on flash. Again, I'm not going to go into the uh, intricacies of how um, flash devices work. Basically, it's really here. We focus on understanding what each VM is doing. So basically, we create what we call a logical uh, I.O. queue or resource queue for every single virtual disk we have on our system. All read-write I.O. goes to flash. We have a tier of spinning brown disk. Um, we use that for basically cold data. So again, you, you heard a, a similar concept from Josh. What we're doing here is we want to keep our highest performance stuff for our active working sets. The, the cold data, and typically in a VM, there's a lot of cold data. So we move that cold data out to uh, this tier over here. Um, if we need it, if a working set changes, it's very easy. We can pull that back into um, we can pull that back into Flash very quickly. Um, and because we understand what each VM is doing, this allows us to do things like performance isolation. So performance isolation is basically, uh, I guess we kind of call this like noisy neighbor syndrome because what it allows us to do. If you've got a particularly busy VM and you've got a load of other VMs that are doing less. Uh, we prevent that from consuming or taking away resources from other VMs that are already running on the system. So that's kind of, we do a lot of performance isolation. So really what we're about is, you know, understanding and looking at things from the virtual machine, from a top-down approach. But, um, and also delivering uh, the right level of performance, whether it's virtual desktops or virtual servers that you're running here. So that kind of wraps me up. How about that? Got here late, but finished on time. So. <laughs> There's an improvement there, anyway. Cool. So I guess I'll be over to take questions during the Q and A session. So. I'll have